What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Crypto Currently Podcast. I'm Eric. I'm joined with Ravi. As always, how are you doing today, sir? Magnificent. We actually have some weather this time. I uh, yeah, you were. I heard you talking. It in, in sunny SoCal is a little bit rainy, and I'm sure that must have been very uh, tumultuous for everybody down there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> As it continues to snow in Metro Detroit again and again and again. Yes, the nor'easters come pounding through your way. Everyone, it's so. it, it won't stop. It won't stop. So much like the weather, um, we've been seeing a lot of crypto activity. Unfortunately, right now we're looking a little bit in the negative. Um, things seem to have slowed down a bit. Uh, we're going to take a look here at Coin Market Cap for just a moment. Uh, Bitcoin currently down about half a percent at still over nine thousand, so nothing too terrible. Ethereum not. Uh, faring very well in this dip. They're down below 700, um, which as a point for a thousand dollars is where everybody wanted to keep it. It's a little bit rough. Um, they're circulating supply still at 98 million. So nothing too, uh, too terrible. I, th I think that should bounce back. Litecoin proving hilariously resilient pretty much to all this, um, still at <laughs> 176. So, um, not the best day. NEM jumping up 15% though. So uh, there's stability in some places. It's not that it's all down. There's a lot of ups. I think it's good. Um, what are you seeing in the markets or what have you, what murmurs have you heard over the last couple of days? Um, I don't know. I just, I think it's tax season. So um, everything's kind of acting funky. People are like figuring out what they're supposed to do with crypto and their taxes. Um, so People who might be filing these on their taxes or pulling out. You have all kinds of crazy stuff happening in the marketplace. Um, people are announcing different things. It, it provides it provides evidence that I think we're not quite as insulated from fiat currency as everybody would, would really hope. Like in a perfect world, it's completely separate. But unfortunately, oh, yeah. when push comes to okay. shove, if you need an extra two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, you are probably going to pull it out. So, Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's life. Well, let's get into our, our our news today. So what we wanted to focus on today was specifically the effect of mining and what it is doing. Um, it's the Wild West right now. It's highly unregulated. It eats up a lot of power. People are buying GPUs to the point where the uh, GeForce GTX 1080 graphics processors are up over $1,000, forcing yeah. NVIDIA to create crypto mining specific GPUs, which is... Yeah. Uh, huge impact that is if you can say nothing else about it it's a huge impact on the world um so the first story that we're going to work here is from coin telegraph and it is that five acres of tomatoes are going to be grown from bitcoin mining heat so they're going to as you can see in this picture move the heat from the mining rig up into greenhouses to kind of use this as a, as a secondary way to create either income or just something to do with the heat it's very clever and it's a good use of the energy um, to to get growing. Robbie, what do you think about this? I thought it was insanely clever. It is insanely clever, and I love it, though. Um, the uh, we see, like you know, when you're when you're creating products, you always end up with like scraps and things, and then derivative products can come from those things. So um, I, I think this is just like maybe the start of derivative products you're producing all this heat i also had an article i don't actually i think you sent it to me it was about crypto mining rigs that doubled as space heaters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that you yeah, I, yeah. My, I i read it if i didn't send it to you i've certainly read it yeah dude like that's this is awesome it's it's um, it's really it's good to see that people are, are at least thinking a little bit outside of the box with what to do with this because it, it generates a ton of heat. Anybody that's got a even a serious yeah. gaming computer in their house or in an office will know that that runs a lot of heat and you got, I mean, yeah. do something with it, make it useful to you. It's nice to see that people are, are trying to find a way to take advantage of this. Yeah. I mean, if you have a, a tiny little single ASIC in your bedroom, um, like... I used to have it heats up the room yeah it's crazy it's not a whole lot but it'll heat up the room so there's a lot of heat that comes out of this but uh so i mean it's kind of a good thing that it's being applied uh in this fashion but you know we reap and we sow so this this is kind of um this is problematic for energy consumption so in this article that uh the crypto tomatoes um i i i think it's 
incredibly clever. Uh, out here in California, we have a large agriculture industry, and um, using we also have a large tech industry. We have a lot of large industry here. Um, so using you know derivatives like this that can be supportive to another industry uh, is excellent use and really fluid uh, economy at least here in here in the state. So I would like to see more California companies come up with this. And I see this quote at the bottom of the article, unfortunately, because of local strict rules, we're unable to obtain license for medical marijuana growing. So we had to choose tomatoes and other vegetables instead. But out here in California, it's legal, baby. And for anybody that's interested, the tomato and the cannabis plant grow eerily similar. Uh, they are very, very, very close in the way that they grow and are grown. So they're probably gearing up for something. Um, you know, that, that'll be helpful. And if you're talking about something that needs to be regulated and controlled as closely as particularly medical marijuana does in a lot of states, this offers a fantastic way. Like I said, I'm very fond of pointing out that it always snows in Michigan and it's a great way to recycle heat. You're already burning this energy and you're, you're paying for the electricity. So you might as well use it. And in California, you guys are legal. We're working on it here, but there are seven currently legal recreationally legal states. So it, it, it's yeah. moving forward. Um, now, on the flip side of that, which is going to bring us to our next article, uh, this article points out that Bitcoin mining costs more electricity than houses. And it, it, in complete fairness, is pointing out that it's really not that big of a deal um, in relation to, as I'm pointing here, renewable electricity generation uh, in, popular current, in popular countries with crypto miners. So like Iceland is the top one at 99.8% with hydropower and geothermal, um, killing it over there. This does bring up an interesting point for us, though. With all the GPU mining that is going on, all the gear that is being purchased, and all the power that is being drawn, it raises this interesting question about something that is, is, is an investment, is purely speculative at this point. And I have to ask anybody who's getting involved in it, um, you know, how careful are you being? Because it feels to me, personally, like if you're going to invest... Uh, ten thousand dollars in gpus to mine something like bitcoin where did do, where does your return lie where is that investment at for you and so the basically what we're what we're getting at right here is where is the return on investment and and is it comfortable so ravi what do you think about um you know where, where are you at on, on mining what's what are your thoughts on it well you know um it it's kind of a double-edged sword right we have mining capabilities and we can produce hardware yeah we just got to spend the money so it, it it's really resource intensive so not just for investors to actually build these rigs but then the power consumption um is uh how should i put this it's 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 huge it's it's, it's really, laborsome yeah yeah and um you know in this article it mentions different countries that have renewable energy sources and a lot of companies are um, <clears throat> setting up their mining operations in countries like Iceland uh, where they have hydropower, geothermal power. They have a really diverse set of um, renewable energies that they pull from. Um, so that is good. I, I like to see that the renewable energies are being consumed for this purpose. But it really brings up the the broader view of, you know, it, does any of this actually matter if we don't have a planet in 50, 100 years, 200 years? Um, you know, how, how <laughs> if we strangle it to death from uh, man-made climate problems, then it, none of this will actually it's, matter. So yeah, and I guess that's kind of that, what I'm getting at, right? Is that it, if you're somebody who's at home who, and I guess this also plays into the divide between where cryptocurrency is versus where we thought it was going. Um, if you're somebody at home who says, well, if I buy 10 or 20 GPUs at $1,000 a piece, I can start mining this stuff and, and I'll make it rich. That may or may not be true. Um, the efficiency and the, the time at which it takes to mine this stuff can sometimes be very low. And if you're not a power player that's pulling hundreds of GPUs sometimes, you may yeah. not be doing that much and it may be a folly investment and you're eating up a ton of electricity. So that's why I bring up return on investment as an interesting point with this when it comes to the electricity and the power draw. Um, 
things like the Electronium Mobile Miner, where you're releasing tons and tons and tons of coins that are easily mined even by a mobile device, is an interesting way to try and um, disperse that power grab. And as we're all aware, or if we're not, Monero has been huge in the media because they use... Uh, dormant computing power through web browsing to mine their cryptocurrency so there are other avenues that we can we can go on but like i said before with something that at this point is purely speculative and the markets move up and down at will it can be kind of a dangerous thing to to dump your electricity bill into definitely i mean um it's it's a dangerous investment however the decentralization of mining is important you know you don't want to just have like one company that mines and they can defeat the, the whole purpose transaction yeah exactly um so i mean i i think for folks at home who aren't looking to dump a million bucks into investing into a mining operation and you do want to set up a node of some kind set one up hit the minimum requirements, see how it goes, look at your electrical bill, look at what you could do. Maybe it means, you know, oh, hey, I could throw some solar panels on my roof or something, um, or f find another source of energy. Um, so yeah, do some research, but this is, uh, stay conscious of energy consumption. It's definitely, it's already an issue now um, with cryptos being a, very small kind of niche corner of our world um it energy is a problem already so with this coming up and being a high energy consumption uh network it's it, it, we we can foresee a lot more problems um in the future yeah and I, it, it really points to the fact that like anything if you're going to invest in this whether it be the infrastructure or the cryptocurrencies themselves do your research, make sure that you're looking up companies that you like that are going to do something that you will be happy with over time and make sure that you've got the money to invest in it. And if unfortunately, if it's a break point between saying to yourself, I don't have the money to buy these miners, then there are due to the decentralized nature of this other ways to get involved. You can definitely help out. You can definitely help on the blockchain. Um, you know, but you don't need to bankrupt yourself doing it because that's not going to help anybody. We're trying to, I think as a, as an, industry and as a community i think we want to really build this thing and i think we should be trying harder to help each other succeed um you know amidst things like just came out with the binance hack that was it was binance was it not um i think so yeah it was, was yeah it? i believe it was binance that got hacked for a okay. massive amount of uh it's a massive amount of trouble and they are putting up a ton of money for anybody that will go headhunt and find the people who did it um, you know, that's, that's amazing news. And it's not to say that there aren't going to be other exchanges that come in and can combat these sorts of problems, but you know, it's still, it's still a volatile network. So I, I am hesitant to use that term because I think it's overused in the industry. Everybody says yeah. volatile, <laughs> decentralized volatile. I know, I know, I know. Volatile volatility. It's yeah. About... It's, yeah. The, the buzzwords that we all use, uh, I, I think we could, we could, yeah. probably find some synonyms at this point but well you know another thing to bring up about um renewable energy and just environmental impact um you know it's it's something we're, we can use this decentralized idea to combat anything right so if everybody pitches in just a little bit of network power we could run this massive network where anyone can do transactions uh, at least that's the principle of it um, I, honestly the same thing seems to be true if everybody kind of pitched in a little bit towards working towards um energy efficiency you know turning off certain lights uh conserving energy uh using more technologically efficient uh light bulbs in your home using solar panels doing just small things small things that you can do for yourself will you know help everybody in the long run and it kind of helps society so uh i hate to be a envir uh, a, a gun-toting environmentalist uh californian a, a total cliche over here <laughs> it's 
it's something that we should all be no i i I agree with you and i think we need to take a stance on that and uh and make sure that we are promoting proper use and and educated use and everything so i'm i'm actually going to show something on screen here for everybody this is a company that we did an interview with uh very early on with cryptocurrency this is climate coin they have a decentralized approach to investing in and developing green energy solutions globally uh it's a great 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 place to look if you're interested in that sort of stuff. There are tons of green energy initiatives, and I advise everybody to look through all of them and find what makes you the most comfortable. But if you are somebody that's trying to get involved in blockchain and cryptocurrency, check out Climate Coin. They've got great stuff. We're actually going to have the CEO on the show uh, within the next couple of weeks. So it'll be a good place um, to check out and probably will be the main focus of that episode as we have a bit of an ebb and flow to them as they they blend into one another. So um, We have been on, I think, for just exactly enough time today. So I want to thank everybody for listening. Please hit that subscribe button and check out our website for all of our other interviews and everything. Ravi, thank you, as always, for being on with me. Thank you. Excellent. Love the salute, man. So everybody have an awesome day, and we will see you guys soon. Take care. Peace.